So you're developing an Android application and now you would like to implement Google Maps. Well, then this is the right video for you. I'm going to show you step by step how to do that. Therefore, I'm going to use Android Studio and I'm expecting you to do the same. Then you need to click on this little icon here to open up the SDK manager and then go to Android SDK. Here you select SDK tools and you need to make sure that Google Play services is installed. So you can then apply and click OK and that will then install this package. Then once it's done, you click finish and we're good to go. Now you can click OK and start your new project. So let's create a new project. And here you can now select a Google Maps activity. Once selected, click Next. Give your application a name. We are going to use Kotlin for this. And then click Finish. Once the Gradle is fully loaded, you will find that under Values, you have this Google Maps API XML debug file. And it directly shows you where you can find a key. You can follow these instructions here. You can see it directly gives you the right step. So step four is to get a key. Therefore, there are different steps that you can take to get an API key. The fastest and easy way is to click on the link directly in the XML file. So it's this link here. Therefore, you need to be logged in with your account, with your Google account, and then you can create a new project here. So you can either create a project or you can select an existing project. So I'm just going to create a new project, click continue. Once you click continue, this screen comes up. You can create an API key by clicking that button. That will take a little while then. And then the new API key has been created for you. And you can just copy it from here. Back in Android Studio, you need to go ahead and replace this part here where it says your key here. So just paste your key in there. Next, let's look at the XML file that was created for us. And it's this activity maps XML file, which you can see it's a fragment here. Let's go into the code to understand it a little better. So we're not using a linear layout or any other type of layout. We're directly using this fragment here. And the name is, well, as you can see, support map fragment. It takes the whole width and height. It gives us tools context, which it says it's a maps activity. And well, it uses a bunch of namespaces here. At this point, we can now go ahead and go into our maps activity. And you can see here, you also have some code prepared for you already. As you see, there is this override on map ready. This will be called once the map is ready and it will basically just set the marker on the Google map at the latitude that is stated here, which in this case is going to be Sydney. So if you want to set the marker somewhere else, you would just need to find out the latitude that you need for that location where you want to put the marker and the longitude and then you can change the name of the city where you want this marker to appear. All right, at this point you can just run the application and you will see that this is what you're getting. So your Google Maps activity is working. You have the marker directly in Sydney. So if you want to zoom in, you can press control and then drag in and move in order to find a little more details here where you are specifically. So let's check it out. Where in Sydney are we? Let's zoom all the way in. And there you are. That's where they decided to put us. Marker in Sydney. Quick pause. So you're learning something about Android in this video and I hope you enjoy it. If you want to learn everything that you need to know to become a real Android developer, then definitely check out my Android Masterclass because in this course, you're going to build a bunch of great applications along your journey to becoming an Android developer. First, you're going to learn the Kotlin basics. Then you're going to learn to build one app after another. And while you do that, you get a bunch of demos, which will really dig deep into the concepts as well as presentations, which will help you to understand what you're learning. So don't miss out and get the course right now. You can find the link in the description below. Now let's say you want to add a marker for New York. So you want to use this latitude and longitude and you want to change the name of the marker or the text that will appear once you click on the marker. Well, let's just use those values here and create a new entry. So here I'm going to create a new entry called New York 
and it will be latitude and longitude with 40.7128 and 74.0060. And then I can add a new marker and I'm going to call this marker, marker new York. And then once the map is ready, I want the camera to not move to Sydney, but the camera to move to New York. So let's move it to New York this time. At this point, you just need to make sure that your marker position at marker options here is also set to New York, and that will generate the marker in New York then. So in whatever latitude, longitude you have entered here. And now if you run that, we can see that we are ending up in Kyrgyzstan. Why is that happening? Well, that has to do with the longitude that was displayed to us on Google, this being here, west. So it's 74 west, not east. So let's add a minus here to this number and rerun it. And you can see now we end up in New York. So let's zoom in and we can see there we are in New York. If you want Google Maps to zoom in automatically, you can also do that in the code. So the zoom value is something that you can influence as well. Therefore, you just need to add zoom to this function. You can see there is a function called new let long zoom. I'm going to use this one and I need to pass a float here. So there is a zoom value between one and 20, while one being the world, five being a landmass or continent, 10 being a city, 15 streets and 20 buildings. So let's just see what street we have at 15. And we need to add F here because we are expecting a float here. So if you look at this, you can see it's new let long zoom float. And by the way, in order to open the documentation, you can just press control and click on the method name and then you will find some more details. So it's expecting a float value here. Now let's rerun it and just see how it zooms in to the right position. So there we are. So as it seems, we are in a park in the New York City Hall Park. All right, so that's it for this sweet little introduction to Google Maps in Android Studio at Kotlin. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a like and also don't forget to subscribe to get more Android related content as well as if you have any questions or if you would like to know more about Google Maps, then definitely leave a comment and ask your questions there because we then can also create a more advanced video on Google Maps to really show you all the things you need to know when it comes to implementing Google Maps to your application. And also don't forget to check out one of those two videos where you learn more about Android.